everyone and uh, welcome back so we're going to start working on detailing the bottom portion here so uh, the best way to start off I think would be adding our subdivide so subdivision subsurf and you can see our geometry gets a little wonky so we'll make it smooth shading for starters and uh, so right away we notice that we have the issue of this being round and we don't want that so if we select uh, all of these outside edges and again, we just mean crease them right up here, and that makes them uh, nice and flat for now. Back to that shape, and then we'll do the same thing on the back here. Let me see here. Mean crease it up. So, I want to start off by adding some of these black bars in the back, just give it some definition and a bit of shape. So, I want to do that by. You know, it's adding a whole new shape. Now, I don't want to trash our geometry on this bit, so I'm going to have the cursor lined up here in the center. Uh, to do that, you just shift S, cursor is selected. Then we're going to add a torus right down here. And if you don't have that shape, go to File, User Preferences, Add ons, um, Objects. And then it's, uh, it might be under Extra Objects, Extra Mesh, Extra Curve, or anything like that. So, you know, we've brought in the torus, and it's got very high geometry right now, especially with the subdivision, and again, we don't need that much like when we were using that cylinder. So, for major segments, I'm going to just make 12 for now, and see how that looks, and then for minor, I think just 4 would do fine, because it is, after all, just, uh, you know, details on the side. So, the radius here we'll play with, I want it to be pretty thin, all in all. So I think making the minor radius about 0 0.08 and the major radius 1. Looks like it'll be just fine for now. And then you can rotate it 90 degrees. And slide it onto the back here. And of course we just scale it down to fit how we want. So that looks good. And we'll duplicate that. Move it over. Scale it up a little bit to keep everything in line. Scale it up a little bit. Now we have just three of these little... Uh, bits adding some definition here. So another bit we have is uh, this cover kind of area on here, and that's that's mostly mostly due to texturing there. But we can also add that. So just bring in a loop cut here and bring it up to the front. And then bring in, oops, sorry, bring in yet another one right here. And then the way you get that is you simply would take this loop here, if I can get a hold of it, uh, E, and then extrude it inwards. You can see here how we now have a lined up area and that just seems a little um, excessively close together for me so I'm going to grab all of these loop cuts and take them and just scale them together on the y-axis and that just keeps, gives us that uh, curve there but keeps them still pretty close. And actually, I might want to make this just a little bit bigger than the front bit. Uh, this is kind of how I like it. So, we also have these squares on the side. And how we go about doing that is we select all of these. And then we go to Individual or Origins. And then on the side here, we want Extrude Individual. And then if we scale them all, they scale inwards. And then we can... If we start to mean crease them right now, and then we extrude them inwards. Oop, sorry, come down here and make this median point now because we're extruding them down. And once again, increase the mean. And now we have uh, all these cool little dimples on the side. You know, just adding, it's all about uh, making it look real and adding definition to it. So, another thing I noticed here is we have kind of like a crease here, giving it a much more mechanical look and I think that we can achieve the same thing by just increasing this and uh, uh, that might actually just be because of the lighting so we won't worry about it too much so we have all these little ropes here and the best way I found to do that was just simply using curves so go into object mode shift A add a curve just a bezier curve we'll bring this one up we'll rotate it 90 degrees and we'll bring it down here for just a moment. So the best way I found to position these curves is to shift S and put them to a selection. So I want them coming from let's just say here, so cursor to selected. 
And then we go in here, grab this end, shift S, selection to cursor. And then we can do the same thing. So if we want this to connect all the way uh, over here, cursor to selected, and then offset. And you can see here, we now have like this type of rope. So it's moving through itself right now. So to change this, we have select an edge and play around with it. And actually, this seems like it's got a bit too much height on it. So we're going to W subdivide this curve once so we can just bring it in, have a bit more control with it. And then over on the curve side over here on the right, go into curves, uh, fill, make it full, and then make the depth. Uh, we'll just turn this up some. Maybe 0 0.025 looks good. Resolution 2 or so. And if you go into uh, wireframe, you can see all the geometry that's added if you choose to change that to a mesh object, which we will later for texturing. But right now we can just leave it a curve. We have to make these uh, just go in here. Make this go in here. And then on this one, all I have here is added onto the body are just simple cylinders. So we can bring in a cylinder, make it probably just make it six because it's it's a really small part of what we're doing. So we really don't need all the extra geometry. Actually six might even be too much. So then we just rotate this around, scale it down. And it's just to give uh, the illusion that there's something there it's hooking into. You know, the ropes, they don't actually do anything, but they look really important. And that's, that's what matters, is making it look like it's uh, working more than actually trying to make it work. And that's just one of those things that you kind of have to get used to working with uh, 3D. Right now I did a control 7 and rather than making the view top view, it made it the bottom view. So right now we have one of these. I can shift D that, bring it over here, cursor to selected. And then to move this cube, we do shift S with offset. See, because if I do a regular uh, selection to cursor, it squishes it into one vertice. But if we do with offset, they remain the same. Bring it in here. And then we can go through and we can just position this back into place. And then I think I'll just take this same rope, move it up some. Mm, yeah, that's fine. And then I'll move it down some as well. And then just move it in so I don't have to position it a whole lot. And then I can grab these two, control L to select the entire thing, shift D to duplicate it, and then move them down uh, back along the curve. And then just do the exact same thing for the one up here. Although for this we have to get a bit more uh, fancy with the editing because it's just larger up on the thruster. That's not hard. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not getting it perfect. If you want to, feel free. So this is just to give the basic uh, instruction how we go about putting these hoses and pipes on here because um, you know it's simply not feasible for me to sit here for the next two hours and detail it. But if you want to, feel free. So also we, we need to move them to the other side and I, I, for, I, for, I went without the mirror modifier uh, just because it didn't seem that necessary. So shift S, cursor to select it. So it's in the middle of this and we select these three. Actually we can hit control J and put all of these curves in uh, one object. Now we make the center of the 3D cursor. Shift D to select them all. S scale it on the x-axis a negative one and it flips it around exactly on the other side and then we can select the two of these and control j them together now we can do the exact same thing with all of our cylinders make sure you select just one bit of each of them shoot ah can't seem to get a grip here that's okay uh, control L, shift D, S, X, negative one. And here they're lined up on the other side, just fine and dandy. So that'll be it for this tutorial, uh, going through and demonstrating how we make these ropes. I don't think I'm going to add any more, but I highly encourage you to go through and put more on. Uh, it's the exact same promise. Maybe put some back here. So. 
Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.